We have the, the map of Valencia, and as you can see, all of this is the university. It's really close to the sea, so it's a good atmosphere to teach and also to do research. We are receiving lots of Erasmus students, and we have a lot of competitions with the, with the sea, because they have to decide if they want to come to our classes or they want to go to, to the sea. In my group, we are a group uh, working with food technology in general. So we started working with dried ham, Spanish dried ham, then we moved into drying fish, then we worked with some, some gelatins. So we work with many things and we are uh, really active, so we like uh, collaborations. So in this of collaborations, we started working with uh, Institute of, of Chemistry and with this collaboration, we tried to encapsulate some molecules that could be used full for nutrition. I studied nutrition, so I had the interest of releasing some nutritional compounds in the small intestine. So we started with this project. For encapsulation, as you know, there are uh, organic systems that are really traditional and really, and really good, such as, for instance, carbohydrates, proteins, or lipids. They have, uh, however, in, uh, in our opinion, when we started this project, these organic uh, structures, they have low st uh, structure stability. Sometimes they have a poor uh, effect in the protection of the encapsulated molecule. And also, overall, they have the poor capability to control the release uh, uh, rates or the uh, target release. In, in in opposition, we proposed the use of mesoporosilica particles. That was the aim of, the, of this institute. Mesoporosilica particles are structures of silicon dioxide uh, arranged so that they can create porous of from 2 to 50 nanometers. Uh, also, the material, uh, the silicon dioxide, it is uh, this, this additive uh, approved by the European Commission. And also, it is considered generally recognized as safe by the FDA. Also, as it is an inorganic support, it is more stable and also rigid. This could protect the entrapped molecules. This is one of the studies that we are performing now, if these molecules are able to protect the particles through the digestion or, for instance, for light and also for heat. And overall, for us, the, the most important capability of these supports is the possibility to anchor or organic molecules on the surface of these particles. Because if we, are, if we have the porous and we can decorate the surface with organic molecules that can be opened or closed at will, we will be able to create these um, active, mole uh, active um, delivery systems. Okay? So I'm going to explain how do we synthesize these particles and how do we create this uh, molecular gate. So first of all, we need to start with a surfactant. The surfactant in the media is going to arrange, creating the micelles at the proper proportions of surfactant and temperatures and concentrations, we will create these rod-shaped micelles. So uh, with higher concentrations, we can create these supramicellar hexagonal aggregates, this made with, with the surfactant, so it is organic. So if in the surface we add the, uh, the precursor, that it is a siliceous precursor. This siliceous precursor is going to polymerize on the surface of these micelles, so creating like this structure. Finally, if we want uh, these porous uh, uh, for the encapsulation, we need to remove this organic part. Organic part. So by calcination, we can remove the organic part. So we have uh, an inorganic structure able to encapsulate all the, the molecule that we want to be inside. Then we can use chemistry to add some organic molecules on the surface of the material after the encapsulation of the payload molecule that we want to encapsulate, creating these uh, or molecular gates. So these molecular gates can interact with different stimuli being opened or closed depending if we want to release or we want to uh, stop the, the release. So then we need, to, uh, we need to study what could be the stimulus that can open or can close these molecular gates. For instance, if we study the gastrointestinal system, 
we can know that here in the stomach we have some acid pH and also we have some, uh, pro, uh, some enzymes such as pepsin, renin or gastroglipase. So there could be some stimulus to open or a stimulus to avoid is if we want to close our molecular gates through the pass through the stomach. Okay? Then in the small intestine we have a neutral pH, so this change in pH could be used as, as a stimulus. We have more digestive enzymes and also we have build components with refractant activity, so it could be used uh, also as a stimulus. And if we would like to release our molecules in the large intestine, we could use the fermentative, fermentative microflora, extracellular uh, enzymes, and also the negative redox potential that we have in column. So now I'm going to provide examples about these molecular gates. And for instance, this is a uh, one of the molecular gates that we developed in the past. So it's a really simple molecular gate. It's a, a polyamine that it is anchored to the surface of the particles. So at acid pH, polyamines are protonated, so they want to uh, repulse uh, other, other chains. So they are using lots of space, and also they are able to coordinate with uh, negative anions. So molecular, uh, the gates are closed. In contrast, in basic pH, these uh, electronic repulsions are going to disappear, so they create some channels through the ones the molecules that, the molecules that have been incorporated in the particles can escape. So this system, it is uh, really nice because as we saw here, uh, these molecular gates are closed at acidic pH, so they will be closed through the pass, uh, during the pass through the stomach, but could deliver the, the particle encapsulated or the molecule encapsulated in the small intestine. Okay? So for instance, we work with this system with folic acid because folic acid is really unstable and also we are uh, supplementing our diet with folic acid, but there are studies that say that if you have a long exposition to folic acid at big concentration, it can have like a double H word. It can act as a double H word <coughs> because it creates like peaks of absorption, such as with, um, with sugars, in, in, if you don't have insulin enough. So these peaks of absorption derivates the folic acid to alternative <coughs> routes, metabolic routes, and they can create some metabolites that can provide uh, or can provoke certain types of cancer. So controlling the release and releasing properly the proportion of folic acid that you need in your diet and the proportion of folic acid that your metabolism can metabolize, it's a good solution. Other types of molecular gates are molecular gates enzyme driven. It means that we are anchoring a molecule that can be cut by, by an enzyme. So depending on the enzyme, uh, we will have different systems. For instance, this is a really basic system in which we anchor some lactose to the surface of the, of the particle. So in the absence of lactase, the system is closed and after the, mol uh, the system finds some lactase, uh, the, the sugars are cut. So the, if we reduce the length of the change, covering the particle, we are delivering the the molecule inside. The same happens if we add some peptides, but in this case we will need the use of a peptidase. So uh, as we work here with a, a small change, we can use big chains, so the, the release will be more sustained uh, along the time. We can add other sugars, for instance, uh, galactases. In that case, we need a specific, more specific enzymes released in the in the bicolonic flora, and also we can use DNA as a molecular gate. In this case, we will need a DNA S to uh, open the, the system. We talk that the, the use of different organic systems attached to the particles is, uh, w was useful to create different release kinetics, but also there are different uh, organic particles, inorganic particles, such as support. For instance, the most common is the MCM41 particle. However, we can synthesize holosilica particles in which 
uh, they, are, they have big porous and also a big cavity in the middle. However, the, here, as you can see, the, the release kinetic is really fast. So it's useful when we don't want to control the release along the time. Other molecules, such as uh, other particles, such as, for instance, SBA15, the, the, the porous is bigger, so also the release is faster. And also there are other molecules, such as UVM7, in which we have the aggregation of different mesoporous silica particles, so uh, we can feel not only the porous in the particle, but also the textural porous among particles. Okay. So, as we said at the beginning, with these particles, we wanted to study if the encapsulation could protect the, the, um, the cargo that was encapsulated in the particle. So, in the study with folic acid, we encapsulated uh, folic acid and um, we worked with the folic acid encapsulating and with the folic acid free. And we applied some heat. So, uh, as you can see, as you, uh, so light, sorry. As you can see here, this was the encapsulated folic acid, and here this bar is encapsulated folic acid, this is free folic acid, so the comparison, as you can see here, along the time, encapsulated folic acid is always around 100%, so it is protecting, while if it is free, it, is, uh, it disappears, because the light is affecting uh, free or, uh, the free folic acid. So the, here it is, Three, the third bar is folic acid plus, plus vitamin C. So it's uh, acting as an antioxidant. So you can see that encapsulation in this case is acting as a, the same, has the same effect as the addition of an extra antioxidant to the media. The same happened after the addition of these particles to uh, an apple juice in which you can see that it protected the encapsulated vitamin. And here you can see that the system didn't lose their uh, releasing activity after the, uh, the addition to this, to this juice. So in the, in the juice uh, that had a pH around 3.5, so as it was um, an acid pH, an acid pH, if you remember, the gates were closed. So at acid pH, the gate was closed, so we have any delivery, no delivery. After changing the pH into 7.5, reproducing the conditions of the intestine, the gates opened, and then we, we found this control release. So then we did the same with a yogurt, so we included these particles in a yogurt, and as you can see here, the pH was not modified by the, con the addition of the particles, the same the synthesis of the, of the yogurt, and also the color coordinates. So the addition of these particles to real food don't modify the characteristics of the, of the food. Also, the particles are not degraded. Uh, well, these are uh, bare particles. I mean, particles without the addition of any organic uh, molecule on the surface. So as you can see here, after digestion, texture can be lost. However, when we add these molecular gates, this, uh, the structure is not, is not lost. So molecular gates have a, like a double function. It is, protect, uh, it is uh, good for the creation of this control release, but it's also protecting the particles through the digestion and the attack of really harsh environments, such as the environment of the, in the, uh, of the stomach. And also, when we talk about nanotechnology, we need to perform some uh, cytotoxic um, uh, studies. In this case, we work with cells. Uh, so as you can see here, we have the cell, the, cell, the cell viability of four different group of cells. And at really high concentrations, the viability was around 100%. <coughs> Also, we, we work with Cyanorhabditis elegans, that it is a, a worm that it is really used now in, in toxicological studies. And as you can see here, the survival of the Cyanorhabditis elegans didn't change by being in contact with our particles. So we think that at least these particles don't have uh, acute toxicity. 
So other uses of these mesoporosilica particles. So we, uh, now we are transforming our, our approach. We are not using these uh, mesoporosilica particles only for encapsulation, but also as a, a support for anchoring other molecules to the surface. For instance, for the creation of an, uh, antimicrobial systems. As we mentioned, the particles can entrap uh, molecules. In, in the first part of the presentation, molecules were folic acid, but they could be also antimicrobials in order to create antimicrobial systems. However, we can also add to the surface these antimicrobials using the same chemistry. And we are now working in this research line. They molecu these molecules could be amines or they could be essential oil components. So this is a study in which we anchor the amines. And as you can see here, we have the, the control and also particles functionalized with carboxyl groups. So as you can see here, the contact with the particle didn't change the concentration or the survival of the microorganisms. However, after we put in contact the particles functionalized with amines, the positive uh, charges created a harsh environment for the bacteria, so they were uh, killed at uh, this concentration. If we did the same, we did also the same assay, comparing the, sa the same amount free and anchored to the surface. So as you can see here, the functionalization of the surface modified the toxical activity for the bacteria. So uh, the antimicrobial effect was 100 fold greater than when the particle or when the amines were applied free at the same, at the same quantity. So this, um, this anchoring has a really good effect, uh, improving the antimicrobial properties of some antimicrobials. So here you can see the effect with the, with the micrographies. So here we have the non-treated cells and here after the application of the particle. So as you can see, uh, we have lots of positive charges on the surface of these particles. They can attract all the bacteria and kill them. Also you can see here in this micrograph, like this where the, partic uh, the bacteria with the particles non-treated so any effect here with the, say, with the functionalization with a carboxylic group, so any effect, but when they were treated with particles covered by the amines, as you can see here, all the cells were broken. So not only they are attracting the, the bacteria to their surface, but they are also killing and um, breaking the, the, the membranes of the, of the cells. So we are now adding this particle to cellulose in order to create like antimicrobial filters. And also we are working with essential oil components attached to the surface of this, of these particles. As you can see here, we have here the control and here the effect of adding particles functionalized with organic, uh, with essential oil components, in this case, thymol. So as you can see here, the, uh, it has a, the free, uh, uh, here the free, it's the free component, so it exhibits an antimicrobial power at high concentration, but after attaching the same amount into the surface of mesoporosilica particles, the, the concentration is lower. Okay, so always the same. So we have used this, uh, this system for the purification of, of milk, and free allows the groupment of, uh, in this case, it was listeria, but after anchoring, it reduces the initial charge. We have done the same with a strawberry jam. And now we are using this technology for the filtration of, of liquid foods. So we have applied it uh, for water, for beer. So as you can see, after functionalization, we can uh, reach the, some, some effects. And now why I'm here, because I'm not here to talk about molecular gates, but because this, uh, this conference is focused on packaging. So as we were able to create particles, able to release some component after uh, 
interaction with, with a certain stimuli, we thought about the possibility of anchoring these particles to a film, okay, in which, and for this case, the molecular gate should be able not only to release or to control the release of the encapsulating particle, but also to be able to interact with the surface of the film. In this case, we thought that this system could work as a smart packaging because it would recognize the environment of the, of the media, but after the recognition of the environment, it would be an active packaging because they could release, for instance, an antioxidant molecule or antimicrobial molecule and so on. So oh, for that, we propose these molecular gates for this, uh, for this proposal. As you can see here in the, in the scheme, you have in, in part for the support, again, the cargo and then the molecular gate. So with this system, we published an article last year in which we anchored these molecular uh, particles <coughs> functionalized with molecular gate to the surface of an EVO film, okay? So we work with microparticles and with nanoparticles and we functionalize them with polyamines because the polyamine was the, 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 um, the organic molecules able to control the release depending on the pH of the, of the media. For this anchoring to the film, we had to modify the surface of the EVO film because as you should know, EVO films are not really uh, active in chemically. So by applying ultraviolet light and in an oxidant uh, environment, we created new groups and with these new, new groups, we were able to anchor the, the particle to the surface. As you can see here, the control didn't have a lot of uh, active groups, but after treatment, we studied the, the length of the treatment necessary to create the maximum number of, of carboxylic groups, and through this carboxylic group, we were able to anchor the, the amines of the, of the particles. Here you have now the micrograph of the particles before the functionalization, and then these are the films containing these uh, microparticles or nanoparticles. And as you can see here in this graph, after anchoring the particles to the film, uh, the, proper, the delivering properties were uh, kept. So as a, when we put the film containing the particles at pH2, simulating a, a condition, an acid condition, uh, the, uh, we didn't find any release and, for instance, at pH.5, that it is the atmosphere not only created by the intestine but also because of the metabolism or set of certain uh, um, bacteria, the delivery was achieved. So it was a, um, a sustained and also a controlled release. So what are we working with? So now we want to create antimicrobial films able to, first of all, recognize the presence of a bacteria, for instance, by changes in the pH, or the presence of ADN fragments, and then, after this recognition, release the antimicrobial in the proportion to the amount of the bacteria present. So we can, dos or we want to dosify the, the, the amount of antimicrobial to kill the, the bacteria, but only when they are, when it is necessary. So, in conclusion, mesoporosilica particles can be easily anchored to plastic films, creating both a splash, a smart plus active packaging, and we think that it opens new perspective for the industry, developing new, uh, a new generation of packaging able to release the amount, only the amount of antimicrobial that it is necessary to kill the bacteria that are presented in the media. So, thanks for your attention, and that's all what I want to say. Thank you.